We're in John's Gospel, chapter 10 tonight, a very familiar portion of the Word of God. John's Gospel, chapter 10, and we're going to read from verse number 1, please. The Lord Jesus is speaking. And the Lord Jesus Himself says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he put forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of, of strangers. This parable spake Jesus unto them, but they understood not what things they were which that he spake unto them. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out, and find pasture. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come, that they may have life, and that they may have it more abundantly. And I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling, and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, saith the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he is an hireling, and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. And as the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. And we know that the Lord will add His blessing to the reading of His own precious truth. When you read through the four Gospels tonight, what you'll find and what you'll discover. Nobody ever made the gospel more simple and more clear than the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. The lovely way the Lord Jesus preached was He preached in a language that people could understand. He left His hearers with, with no excuse. In fact, the Bible teaches us tonight that the common man heard him gladly. You know, friends, this evening, there are many things that the Lord Jesus said concerning salvation tonight that conflicts with what many people believe tonight. And I wonder this evening, are there things that the Lord Jesus says that conflicts with what you believe? You see, when the Lord Jesus Christ speaks about salvation, when He speaks about the way to heaven, He points to Himself. You see, people believe tonight all religions lead to God. I wonder, do you believe that tonight? You believe all religions are bound to, to lead to God. Let me put one thing clear tonight and put one thing straight tonight. Religions don't lead to God, they lead to hell. Because the Lord Jesus said in John 14 and 6, for example, He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says, No man cometh to the Father but by me, no matter how religious they are. And the Lord Jesus again said in John 6 and verse 35, He says, You know, 
He says, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth in me shall never thirst. John's Gospel, chapter 10, verse number 11, the Lord Jesus said, He says, I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Why is it tonight that the Lord Jesus points to himself? Because the Lord Jesus Christ tonight is the only salvation you can find. He's the only way to heaven. He's the only person who can save you from your sins. Oh, friend, if any man points you to religion, he's a hireling. Any other person points you to, him, points you to himself, he's an hireling. There's only one tonight who saves. There's only one tonight who can take you to heaven, and that person is the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know what's wrong with our wee province? Do you know what's wrong with the people of our wee land tonight? You could get them to believe anything but the truth. Isn't that true? You could get them to believe anything nowadays, but you couldn't get them to believe the truth. You see, it's so hard tonight to get people to believe the gospel because the gospel's so simple. Man thinks tonight, woman thinks tonight, oh, but it can't be that simple. Sure, I have to earn my way somehow to heaven. Well, there's three things you must do, dear, if you ever want to be saved. There's three things you must do, sir, if you ever want to be in heaven. Do you know the first thing you have to do before you can ever be saved? The first thing you have to do before you can get into heaven, the first thing you have to do, you must take the place and confess to yourself that you're a sinner. No man is ever in heaven or any woman's in heaven right, who never stood in that place right, and believed the fact and the truth that they are a sinner. That's the first step you have to take tonight, because the Bible says in Romans 3, verse 23, we all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. That makes every one of us tonight sinners in the sight of a holy God. And if you're not saved tonight, you're a sinner in the sight of a holy God. It doesn't matter what denomination you belong to. It doesn't matter what side of the religious divide you're on. You're a sinner in the sight of a holy God. And people don't like that. But that's what you have to believe first. And then second thing you have to do, you have to repent of that sin. Don't you try and tell me you can get into sin, whatever, you get into heaven, whatever way you like. No, no, the Lord Jesus says you have to repent of your sin, right? Because he says, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Are you prepared tonight to take the place as a sinner and says, I'm guilty, condemned, and clean? Because you have to stand in that spot first. And you have to repent of that sin and say, I'm saying goodbye to the old life and to the sin. And then the third thing you have to do, you have to come to the Lord Jesus because you have to believe in it that He is the way, the truth, and the life. And, and no man cometh to the Father but by me. But I want to bring you to a very simple text tonight. It's as clear as crystal that even a child will be able to understand it. Now, I wonder tonight, do you believe this text tonight? And this is another thing the Lord Jesus says about himself tonight. John's Gospel, chapter 10 and verse 9, the Lord Jesus says, concerning himself, he says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Now, tell me someone, sir, is there anything about that wee verse you don't understand? Well, let me point you to this verse tonight and allow me to point you to Christ tonight. I want you to notice what the Lord Jesus says tonight. He says, I am the door. 
And I want you to notice that the one and only door there is to heaven, that it's, it's described. The only one door to heaven tonight, the one and only door, it's described. And it's described like this. The door to heaven is a person. And that person is the Lord Jesus Christ. That door tonight is not a door of good works. That door tonight is not a door of, of a good life. That door tonight is not a door of religion. The Lord Jesus says it's a sure door because He says, I am. Tonight he says to you, unsafe friend, he says, I am the door. And I want you to notice not only is it a sure door, did you notice tonight it's a single door? There's no S on it. He says, I am the door. You see, there is only one door tonight. Only one door to heaven and to home. It's a sure door tonight, and it's a singular door. But I'll tell you something else. It's not only a sure door and a singular door. I want you to notice it's a same door because the Lord Jesus says, by me, by me. Heaven's one and only door tonight is the Lord Jesus. Many believe tonight it's the PVC door of good works. People think they can get themselves into heaven as long as they live a good life and do nobody any harm. And a lot of people tonight believe that the rich-looking door, the mahogany door of religion, is the way into heaven. I wonder, do you believe that tonight? You believe that the religious door will I give you access into heaven. Because, mind you, there's many thinking tonight that the door of religion is going to give them access into God's presence and into, into heaven itself. Let me point you to the door of heaven, the one and only door. There's nothing attractive about it. I want you to notice that this door, heaven's one and only door, I want you to see it tonight. It's bruised and it's battered and it's bloodstained. Because you see, the Lord Jesus went to a very dark place for you. And he went to a very dark place for me. It was the place called Calvary. And you know, friend, tonight it was there where the Lord Jesus was crucified. It was there where nails were driven through his hands. It was there where he was crowned with thorns. It was there where he was mocked and scorned. Ah, but worse than that, friends, worse than that, everybody gets taken up with the crucifixion, and everybody gets taken up with the nails, and everybody gets taken up with the crowns. Listen, worse than that, he was made sin for you. And he was made sin for me. You see, he took our sins and our sorrows. He made them his very own. And he bore that burden to Calvary. He suffered and he died alone. Do you notice this door tonight described? illustrated. The Lord Jesus says, I am. I am heaven's one and only door. 
Do you believe that tonight? That the Lord Jesus Christ is heaven's one and only door. The door to scrape. I want you to notice something else about this door tonight. It's a desirable door because he says this, by me, if any man enters in. Do you know why I love what the Lord Jesus said? Because in spite of who we are, and in spite of what we've done, and in spite of where we come from, the Lord Jesus says, by me, if any man. You see, heaven's one and open, only door doesn't exclude anybody. Heaven's one and only door is not closed to Catholics. Heaven's one and only door is not closed to drunkards. Heaven's one and only door is closed to no man. Heaven's one and only door is closed to no woman. No. By me, if any man enters in, and it doesn't matter tonight what you have done to you, this door is a desirable door tonight that welcomes all sinners to enter. You see, this door tonight is a, is a calling door. Can you hear it calling you tonight? By me, by me if any man enter in. You know, friend, everyone that's in heaven tonight, everyone that's there right now, all had to pass through the one door. Christ. Any sinner can come to this door tonight and say, Just as I am, thou wilt receive. Wilt welcome, pardon, cleanse, relieve, because they promise I believe. O Lamb of God, I come. The door described, the door, door desired, the door that is definite tonight. You see, the Lord Jesus says, I am the door by me. If any man enters in, shall be saved. Saved from what? You see, people think this word saved is all, oh, it's a religious word. Oh, that's only this and that's only that. and Oh, it's, it's just a religious word. It's not a religious word at all. You know what saved means? It means what it says shall be saved. Saved from what? Saved from going to hell. Saved from the judgment of God. Saved tonight for all eternity. You see, it's one thing coming to the door, but you have to go through the door to be saved. You see, many people come to the door. Many people see the door. Many people look upon the door. But you see, you have to get through the door 
in order to be saved. You see, you know as well as I do, there's two sides to every door. And as far as heaven's one and only door is concerned, inside the door, that's salvation. Outside the door, well, that's damnation. Inside the door means heaven. Outside the door means hell. A lot of people don't think the door's important. I'll tell you, a whole lot of people in Noah's day didn't think the one door in the ark was important until the door closed. And suddenly when the flood started to come, then they knew how important the door was. But listen, the door was closed. You see, this, this, this door, friend, tonight is not only a, a, a calling door, it's a closing door. You see, inside the door tonight spells salvation. Outside the door, it's condemnation. And it's important that not only you come to the door, you need to go through the door. You need to take that step tonight. It's one thing coming to the door, but you need to go through it. You see, friend, tonight it's a delightful door because it says, and shall go in and out and find pasture. Do you know the date I went through the door was Monday, the 26th of August, 1985. I came to Jesus as I was, weary, worn, and sad. I had my fill of the world. I had my fill of the discos. And I had my fill of cordon about, not need it. But that night, I came to Jesus as I was, weary, worn, and sad. Ah, but I found in him a resting place, and he has made me glad. Do you know the Lord Jesus when you get through the door? When you go through the door, you'll not until then know what real joy is, and you'll not know what real peace is, and you'll not know, friend, tonight, what real hope is until you get through the door. You see, I was 20 years of age when I went through the door. And I can tell you tonight, there's none but Christ can satisfy. None other name for me. I'll tell you why. Because there's love and there's life and there's everlasting joy. Lord Jesus, found in thee. Tonight's your night. And I pray by God's grace you'll go through the door this evening. The Lord Jesus is heaven's one and only door. Let's pray. Lord, tonight we just leave the eternal issues of this meeting with Thee. We thank Thee, Lord, tonight that Thou art the God of all grace. And that's our prayer tonight, that Thou would give the saving grace to any in our meeting tonight that's not saved, that tonight will be the night when they take that step of faith and go through the door. We just leave these closing moments, Lord, with Thee. And as my voice falls silent, we pray that thy voice will continue. We just leave the whole entire meeting to thee. And Lord, we would just ask thee now to quietly part us in thy fear 
and with thy blessing and take us to our homes in safety and may eternity be on all our minds tonight. We just leave it with thee in our Saviour's name. Amen. We're not going to sing.